Newport ST70, we will see the working modes and the patient setup. For starting the ventilator, you have to press the switch on button. Then the ventilator will start. Hello, the HP70 is now starting up. Please wait. Let's see the breath drives in ST70. There are two breath drives available pressure control and volume control. By pressing the same button, we can change it from pressure control to volume control and volume control to pressure control. Here we say, see it is a volume, it was in pressure control. Now we change to volume control. Again, by pressing the same button, you can change it. Now the settings for non-invasive ventilation. Now for starting the non-invasive ventilator, we have to press the more button. Then you have to switch on the NIV on and then you have to tick mark it. So the NIV will be on. Now, if you want to change the slopes, you can adjust by up and down keys. You can see the slope will get changed. Now, there are these type of settings in the more. If you want to see the waveforms, you can see the waveforms over here. Now, let's see the utility settings. These are the utility settings. Then trends, these are trends, then events, all event logs. Here we can see the calibrate automator OT cylinder data screen. If you have fit the data of auto cylinder, uh, auto cylinder then it will uh, show the how much time it will empty. This is the flow curve. If, uh, you can change it by touching it and uh, by selecting the right key, it will uh, save the settings. And the pressure IMAX 25% pre threshold. So these are in more. Now let's go to main. Now let's have a look at the CPAP and the BiPAP settings. CPAP mode. Here for setting CPAP, we have to only set the PEEP and we have to keep the pressure support off. So only one pressure will be there that is PEEP. The PEEP will be that CPAP, only one level of pressure. That will be CPAP. Now uh, by giving the pressure support, we are creating two pressure uh, pressures. So the IPAP, if you consider it will be pressure support plus PEEP and EPAP will be equal to PEEP. Let's see the ventilator modes in Newport HT70. Here the mode is assist control and in breath type is pressure control. So we have pressure control, the PC, the PEEP, the rate, the I time, the P trigger and the flow trigger. PEEP and flow trigger right then you always have to tick mark this button either neither it will go to its previous setting in spontaneous pressure control it was so it will go to pressure setting until and unless you press that tick mark button then only it will save it so assist control are these things and if you want to change any parameter just touch it and by up down keys you can change the parameters then the pressure control you have to take as 25 then the another mode is SIMV, SIMV in pressure control bed type. So these are the settings that you can change. Rate, pressure control, PEEP, I time. So again that you have to tick mark this and you have to save it. Neither it will go to its previous setting. Now the bread type is volume control and let's see the different modes in it. Here is PEEP, pre-trigger, flow trigger and pressure support. So in assist control, saving the settings. Now for volume control, we have need to control the volume. So tidal volume is there. You can control rate, flow, I time, P, P trigger and flow trigger. So the tidal volume can be adjusted by up down arrows. So this can, this can be adjusted. This, uh, this is in liter. So 40 is 400 ml. In SIMV mode so these are the settings that you can change and according to the patient what the patient parameters you have depending on the weight and the flow that you want to have it if you are in confusion you want to know what are the things you have to just press the question mark help button and touch any of the parameter it will show what it is for for monitoring, the four parameters are displayed at a, at a time. Press any of the button, all the monitoring parameters will be shown. If you select the 21% O2, suppose, so 21% O2 will come on the down. 
so all the four forum parameters will be shown at a time we can adjust the brightness by pressing the brightness key here this is cancel button this is accept this is up and down for navigation this is the flow sensor you can see the flow sensor attachment so we attach it over here this is the upper one is proximal line and lower end is exhalation valve so both have a different diameter so they cannot be mix and match this is the tube setting this is the front section of the tubing tube setup which goes to the patient this goes to the patient this is auto level circuit now the FiO2 adjustment the left side we can see the 21% FiO2 so least is 21 max is 100% from here we can adjust the FiO2 the amount of FiO2 we want to give to the patient the alarm settings now we can see the alarm settings the alarm settings so we here we can see the alarm setting so if the values are lower or higher than the set values then the ventilator will give the alarm now let's see the patient circuit setup and the ventilator setup so this is the filter which is uh, which is needs to be cleaned regularly and change at a frequent intervals this is the filter cover these are the screws that can be opened by hand and can be tightened by hand only no need of a screwdriver always make sure that it is firmly fixed no gap now we will attach the low flow oxygen flow meter setup if we want to give oxygen from a flow meter which is non humid uh, which is non humid so you can attach this like this. everything like screwing mechanism it get attached and the metal part the tube gets attached for oxygen entrainment mixture this is oxygen entrainment mixture so if you want to directly connect to bed head panels so you can directly attach this you have to, there are three pins you have to match the socket and then just twist it and it is attached fio2 from 21% to 100% can be set by just moving the knob this is the patient circuitry at the patient end the front end that you can see is the flow sensor the attaching the flow sensor so one side air goes in and one side the air goes out from this the air goes in and from here it comes out so you need to carefully attach this also while cleaning there is a membrane green membrane so this needs to be clean it should be clean and should be properly attached you need to press press this and but well, there is one notch that you need should to you need to match one notch is there so after attaching the knob one circular cap is there which need to be screwed up yeah circuit is complete at the ventilator end this is the flow sensor and proximal line exhalation valve and the main air delivering hose this is the air delivering hose so both the both the tubes are of different uh, diameter so they cannot be mix and match so only the proximal will go to proximal and exhalation wall pipe will go to exhalation we need to make sure that all the tubes are properly attached and the 
flow sensor. Just you have to press it inside and it will get locked. For the transportation purpose, we need to uh, calculate the cylinder, oxygen cylinder. So, size of the cylinder needs to be set by repeat pressing. We can change the type of cylinder. All the sizes are given over there. Just press it and it gets changed. Then cylinder pressure, whatever the cylinder pressure is there, we can adjust with up-down keys. And accordingly, the consumption gets recorded. This units. So all the parameters that are displayed in the, the, the transportation mode that you can see in the right side uh, transport uh, that uh, mode is activated so it tells the data of the cylinder uh, below there are four keys any if you want any uh, want to press any four keys you press it and then it will show a uh, screen from where you can select any one of the data waves Now let's switch off the ventilator. First we need to press the back button on off switch and then we need to accept press the accept key. Then it will show give an alarm. We need to silence that alarm. And then the ventilator will get stop. See the eyes to e ratio setting. Here it is indicated by eye time.